it's a great privilege to be here with you today to talk about a subject matter that is very close to our hearts. Some of us have lived with some bitterness, and we make no apologies about that. We were a people in war, led into war, not by our own wishes or design, but in self-defense. No apologies, Nigeria. No apologies to the world. But here we are. I'm sorry, I'm going to stand up, if you don't mind. Um, my name is Onye Kongwenu, and it's not the Onye Kongwenu that you think you know, that you read about in the papers, but the Onye Kongwenu that was born and raised in Port Harcourt. That's correct. And the person who made that statement knows. When he says DK Onwenu, he's telling you where this person came from. My father was the first Arundizog man in the federal house, and he was representing a Port Harcourt constituency. He was the principal of Enitonia High School. He was a brilliant man, but he died too early. Thank you. That's my background. I'm also from Abia State. Since I am Adamazi, I'm Umwaro. I'm from Imo State, Arundizoga, and I'm from Anambra, where my mother comes from. I can go there and live. I can do anything I want in Anambra. Nobody can say anything to me. I'm also from Lagos State. Ah, surprise, surprise. Yeah, I'm from Lagos State. I married a Yoruba man. I have two Yoruba children. They only paid 5,000 Naira as bride price. So we have a right to demand more money anytime. <laughs> yes, 50 years after that, I fought the war. As a young girl, 14, 15, 16, 17, I was in that war. And I lost many relatives. I worked in hospitals. I carried babies who died in my arms. I treated old people who took days to die. People were dying out of hunger. Even our soldiers were dying out of hunger at a particular point. But thank God we survived. You see, when my father died at 40, he was a politician and also a principal, but he didn't have much money. In those days, you had to keep your day job, even if you were a member of the House of Representatives. Yes, my mother, an Anambra woman, was a trader. Put your hands together for a number of women. She was richer than my dad, so my dad would borrow money from her to buy the land, and, and he never paid back. You know how it is. And my mother dares not raise the subject again. At the end of the war, I could not go back to Port Harcourt. My home was abandoned property. Those of you who come from Port Harcourt know the story. A home that a widow, my father had just laid the foundation when he died in a motor car accident, on duty. A building that a widow, and living just adjacent to us, the Copus on Hospital Road, we could see you, we could relate. In fact, I thought we were related, because every family in Port Harcourt was together. You didn't care where they came from or who they were once you're from Port Harcourt. Every parent had the right to reprimand another child that you saw misbehaving. It was a beautiful town but we couldn't get back to it. So for me, the civil war never ended. At the end of that war, my family, oh no, it never ended, it's still going on. I had no family house. My poor mother went back to claim the property she was beaten into a coma by people whom she had helped all her life and sent to school because she's an evil woman and now Patakot belonged to another group of people. They forgot the sacrifices that the Igbos made. It's still going on. No apology has ever been made about that. The road that is now referred to Harold Wilson Drive used to be DK Owenu Road because of the sacrifice that people like the Owenus, the Eco Pools, the what you know them, the sacrifices they made in, in building up Patakot. Here I am. So I traveled outside thanks to my sister who was at Harvard at the time, who organized for the rest of us to come and go to school. But we all came back. To do what? To develop Nigeria. I have tried, with the little talent that God has given me,
to use it for the betterment of my society and my country. But can I tell you something? That if I were a Yoruba or Hausa woman, I would probably have had more patronage, I would have had more help and more support than I have got by my self-help effort to raise this country up. <laughs> but I'm not asking anybody for anything. I put myself through school. My widowed mother did her best, but I was working two jobs in America to put myself through school. I didn't want to take Nigerian scholarship because they were giving it to everybody, those who deserved it and those who didn't. And many of them were not even in school. I put myself through school. Wellesley College and the New School for Social Research. I have no apologies to make to anybody. I am angry. I am angry at Nigeria. I am angry at this government which seems to be letting us down. I am angry at us as a people. I am angry at my people in Jibo. Because only a Jwada Jomye. If they have refused you, why are you refusing yourself? Stop complaining and do it for yourself. We've always been able to do that. How did we build Imo Airport? Nobody built it. We spent how many years raising money? I know it was my equipment that was traveling all over the country for concerts. I gave free concerts to build Imo Airport. That's who we have been. And I remember in those day, days, Ekurana, Imo State Union, Purana, ZCOB, DK Wanifa, Oputa, Imo, you name them, Abba Kurana, that's it. No dispute. Everybody follows the line and gets done what needs to be done. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are wonderful people. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are resilient. Let me tell you about Ndibo. Ndibo are people with integrity, with conscience, with a feeling of humanity that they can reach out wherever they are and contribute something to that society and not care that they're not even from there. That's who we are. Do not categorize us as people who are uncles. We don't know, we don't have unity amongst ourselves. You're kidding yourself. We love ourselves. But we also love our neighbors. You see, to love your neighbor, you have got to love yourself. That's what the good book says. Love your neighbor as yourself. So how are you going to love your neighbor if you don't know anything about self-love? I am a proud Igbo woman. I know yes. If there's anything you know about me as I walk into a place, know that. That there's nothing you can do to me in this country to bow my head. I will not do it. I am my father's daughter. I am my mother's daughter. As an evil person, I stand before you committed to the project called Nigeria. But at the same time, you talk about never again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. With what is happening now, never again? I don't know. But I will soon take my seat. <laughs> Let me say to the rest of Nigeria, you insult us, and sometimes we do the insulting as well, and that's terrible. We've come to a stage where we have to be insulting each other so badly. But go ahead. We will not succumb. We will not bow. We are children of God. We are here for a purpose. God has put us on this good earth for that purpose. You cannot drive us to the sea. You cannot tell us to shut up and take the pain that you are inflicting on us. Abuse us on top of it. Listen, if you don't want us, then let us go. Thank you. Thank you.